So the thing is, is if we look at the animal kingdom, and this is important when we're talking about your strengths, is a lot of people don't embrace their strengths. They don't embrace who they are as an individual. And the reason why is individuals get killed. And all of the things that I have done up to that point in my life, and even till now, have made me who I am, such that the wide range of experiences I've had, jobs that I've had, which is it pales in comparison to other people I know who have done way more various jobs, right? We've all met that person who like has done every type of job under the sun in their life. I have had enough experiences and varied enough experiences such that uh, a, I understand a lot of things about a lot of different businesses. Uh, I've also been through enough stuff in life personally that I wouldn't wish on anyone else. And so I also have a level of empathy for most situations. I mean, I haven't had a lot of health and or family related, you know, health issues and things like that. However, I can relate on a lot of different levels. And what I found is that all those experiences and the things that I've done make it so that I can have a conversation about a lot of different topics and be very interested in the other person and, and provide some kind of you know, feedback or ideas or you know, uh, conversation to it in so many different topics. And that has helped in rapport building, it has helped in business, it has helped in, uh, in sales and selling such that I finally realized it not that long ago relative to my life that instead of being embarrassed and ashamed of where I had been in the path and my ups and my downs and the windy road is realizing, wait a second, like that's actually made me who I am, which makes me so effective at what I do, especially talking with people and understanding people and, and, and being able to relate on some level. And I think that's very effective. And I think what's interesting too is that most people, I think actually feel the same way I did, which is, you know, if they only knew what my path was, then maybe they would think less of me. Or I wish I had that straight path, like very few people actually do. And uh, I think that comparison is so tough. So my suggestion, stop comparing, stop worrying about what other people are doing and embrace who you are, embrace your strengths and embrace what you like, don't like, how you operate, what you don't do. And, and this is the biggest thing. And then if we look in the, the animal kingdom, our primal brain wants to do the same thing. And I know I keep talking about the primal brain a lot and, and the, the, the amygdala, that part of our brain that's focused on survival and thriving as a group and a tribe. But this is so important. It's interesting that if you want to be really effective at sales and selling and persuading people, First, you have to understand how your mind is working and what has gone into your mind over these millennium as a human, as a species, and then also apply those to your prospect so you understand what you're up against in their mind that they might not even be aware about such that you can help persuade them to make a change. And so that's the reason why I keep bringing this up. The more you can study this stuff, the more you can study human behavior, the brain, the subconscious, limitations, fears, what holds people back, their desires, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, those kind of things. The more you can study that, I firmly believe it will make you a more effective salesperson and potentially just a more effective human because you will understand what makes you tick, what makes you happy, and how to do more of that so you can be happy and effective in this lifetime. So the thing is, is if we look at the animal kingdom, and this is important when we're talking about your strengths, is a lot of people don't embrace their strengths. They don't embrace who they are as an individual, and the reason why is individuals get killed. What do I mean by that? Well, if we look at the animal kingdom, and I'll talk about the one that I know really well, which is the water, the ocean, the sea, is if we look at fish, there's a lot of fish that school. And some of them, you've ever seen those videos where there's a school of fish, it's really tight school. And it almost like this, like, heaping ball as it's just kind of swarming around, almost like a swarm of bees, except it's actually fish. And then what happens is you see in these nature videos where there's a predator that's coming at it and wants to eat it, right? Maybe there's a tuna that's trying to eat these bait fish 
and this thing it's even called a bait ball and where there's just this ball tuna's trying to get to it the problem is is that when it's in that ball there's so many things going on that literally the fish the predator that's trying to attack it and and eat can't pick out a single target and the problem is, is that they can't pick out a single target. So they're going in blind and they're just charging through it. Fish move out of the way. Nothing, unless it's just really unlucky, is going to get eaten. And so the animal kingdom has learned to do that in some situations where those fish are schooling to protect themselves. You think, okay, well, if they're in that big ball and make it easier to eat as they go through it. That's just not the case because it can't single out one target. And then what happens is you'll see in these videos, uh, these nature videos, where one fish will break off from the group or the predator fish will tear through and break off a couple of fish that get, you know, sidetracked or lose track of the school of fish, the big bait ball. Then what happens is there's one or two fish that are outliers and they're on their own. Predator sees them, locks in on that one target and they're toast, right? Going straight after. Once that one stands out, it's over. In schooling fish, they know that's the case. The ones who get separated from the group, from the school, get killed. It's also why if you look at another animal, which is sheep, where sheep, it's interesting, and there's even a term for this that we use as people in our society, which is, you know, being a black sheep and being a black sheep means that you stand out and the reason why and where that comes from is sheep are generally one color mostly bred to be white mostly to be consistent the challenge is is that when a sheep comes out as a different color and just some genetic thing happens they come out as black or spots or stripes then what happens is there's now one that stands out that's different so rest of the sheep are one color. You've got one that's a different color. What happens when wolves or predators come? Well, if you've ever seen sheep, they flock and they run together. And it's this big marshmallowy blob that you can't really tell which one is which. It's hard to identify one sheep out of this mass, this flock that's running around, especially running from a predator, unless there's one that's different. When there's one that's different, it stands out. And that one that stands out, it's easy to lock in on, right? Then the wolf, the wolves, the predators can lock in on that one that's different and say, going after that one, right? And then that one gets taken out. And our brain feels the same way. Our mind, because we're a tribal society, wants to fit in and doesn't want to stand out for that same reason. That's why, again, you hear that term, the black sheep of the family, the black sheep of the of the group. It's that person who's different. They're, they're, one of these things is not like the other, right? Like they're not playing along. They're not doing what everyone else is doing in that family. Maybe everyone's a doctor and you got this one person who's doing something different as a career and then they're considered the black sheep. They're different, they stand out, they're beating, they're moving to the beat of their own drum. And in this situation, what I want you to do is fight that instinct, fight the innate human survival side of us that wants to fit in. And it's not that we just wanna fit in because we're just a lemming that wants to go along with it. It goes deeper than that because fitting in means we're with the tribe. If we're with the tribe, then we're gonna survive. If we're not with the tribe, we're out on our own in the cold, dangerous world, and that's not a good place to be. You usually don't make it. At least it wasn't that long ago when people who weren't a part of the tribe were actually making it. So that's what our brain is doing. I want you to embrace your strength. I know this is a whole lot of background. You were thinking, hey, when is Jason gonna get to the good stuff about helping me close more deals? And I am, because the key is, is you wanna embrace who you are are you want to be okay with being different you want to be you and authentically you i cannot count the number of times that i have been in call centers in sales on sales floors in sales teams observing watching working with them where i have seen somebody who i talked to when they're not on the sales floor or they're not on the phones. And then they get onto the sales floor and they become something different. They want to match what everyone's doing. They want to do what everyone's doing so they can fit in, maybe so they can be accepted, maybe because they think that's what it takes to be successful in sales. And the challenge is, is that if that's not authentic to you, it's really hard to sustain long 
term. Pretending, acting, putting on a front, fake it till you make it, act as if, that's tough long term. Short term, there's some reasons you can justify doing some of those. Long term, it's not gonna work. What I'd rather you do is embrace who you are. Embrace your strengths. Embrace what you're bringing to the table and stop judging yourself. Stop thinking, okay, well, I'm not like Bob. Bob sells this way. He says these things. Bob's been doing sales for 15 years, so I should just do what Bob does. I'm not like that. I haven't been in sales very long. Um, I still have that. I still have that where I think I talk to people, especially for my podcast, especially for the books that I do. Like I'm interviewing people, talking to other people who are in sales, sales experts, consultants, and people who they've been in sales for a very long time. They knew they wanted to be in sales. They love sales. They're excited about it. That's what they wanted to do for a long time and they absolutely love it. And I think to myself, I didn't wanna do sales for a long time. In fact, even once I started in sales, I still ran away from it several times because I didn't think I wanted to be in sales. I didn't think I was good at it. I never got any training or guidance or mentorship about it. And so I basically raised myself, ran away from home, the home of sales several times, and then you know came back and embraced it, and here I am now. But the key is don't judge yourself. Don't judge who you aren't and don't judge the strengths that you have. You wanna focus on your strengths. You wanna focus on what makes you you, what makes you happy and what you can bring to the table in these conversations and focus on your strengths. Now, what are your strengths? (laughs) That's up to you. 